surrounds everything in life. In fact, it imitates life. What we oftentimes don't realize is that we live under a canvas. A canvas that's constructed out of cement, brick, and mortar. But sometimes those canvases go unnoticed. You see, architecture is an art. Architects are the artists. And William Adair Bernoudi is St. Louis's unsung artist. It was around 1950. And um, Bernoudi had dropped out of Washington University School of Architecture and joined the famous Frank Lloyd Wright at his Taliesin house. Here, Bernoudi would work one-on-one -on -one with Wright and pick up some tricks while also adding some of his own. Wright's vision was something akin to Bernoudi's. It was a vision of harmony. It was a vision that sought the union between architecture and nature. Something radical then and something rare now. Throughout the years, architecture has been a sign of the times, ranging from the Greek to the Gothic eras. Architecture and its types speak volumes about a society and its influences. St. Louis, like any city, has its own architectural story, characterized by heavy German, Victorian, and now recently, more modern styles. St. Louis's architecture, besides some few hidden gems here and there, has really been astonishing or unique in any facet of the scene. In fact, I believe that St. Louis architecture is lacking. Coming out of Wright's Taliesin house, Bernoudi was fresh and ready to start working in his own town of St. Louis. You see, ranging from houses, churches, colleges, and even sculptures, Bernoudi did it all, and did it uniquely, adding his own taste to St. Louis architecture. While there aren't many physical or online resources about Bernoudi, there still exists a handful of passionate experts on this subject. So for now, let's go take a trip to Bernoudi's own home, where we'll meet our first expert. Hi, my name is Ted White, and I'm a real estate agent with Dealman Sotheby's International Realty. And um, I bought this house for my mother um, about eight years ago. Um, my mom and dad had bought this home from the Bernoudi estate when Mrs. Bernoudi passed away. So Bernoudi built this house in 1954 for himself and his mother, seeking to merge nature with architecture Bernoudi was deliberate in his planning and his details. This house sits in a lush, nestled corner of Odoo and is an excellent example of Bernoudi's vision of architecture. Adding facets of nature, along with some architectural genius, he, su he successfully and uniquely did just that. While this house on paper is a smaller house, it is an excellent use of space. See, Bernoudi's style is one that was unique. It was a style that was rare, but necessary. Um, you know, before I would have said, oh, it's just another ranch home. You know, which I always, you know, people always thought, oh, ranch homes are just like plain and, you know, uninteresting. And um, so this is a ranch home, but I would call it more of an architectural home. Um, so it was designed and built by William Bernoudi, and he lived here himself. Um, so it, and when my parents bought this house, it was, um, I really came to appreciate it more and more and appreciate the architecture and, um, you know, understanding it more, and it's a, it's a change, like that. You know, to embrace a house like this, it's 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 wonderful. You really appreciate it every day. I have coffee here every morning. I look out to the windows that go into the yard um, every day, um, 
in the summertime I have coffee on the cantilever um, patio and um, it really is a house where you know you appreciate the outdoors. The outdoors is as, as important as the indoors in this home. So something that truly distinguishes Bernudi from the rest of St. Louis's architects is the fact that he took risks at the cost of his vision. See, he always circled back to his vision of union and balance. But how did he do it? William Bernudi was probably, I would say, is probably like the premier architect in St. Louis. He studied under Frank Lloyd Wright and um, came to say, you know, started his plan in St. Louis building many beautiful homes. This is a smaller home compared to some of his bigger ones that you'll find throughout Ledoux and surrounding areas. And um, so William Bernudi was, again, he, he really built like a solid house with just wonderful details and built, he's known for like built-ins. And um, so he really is one of the best. There are some other wonderful architects in St. Louis, but sort of the Bernudi aesthetic, you know, is most appealing to me. Bernudi's aesthetic is most definitely an appealing one, but what about it makes it so drawing? What was Bernudi inspired by? With this, I would say Bernudi um, really took a lot of influences from, you know, Japan, sort of Asian influences. You'll see it in some of the details throughout the house, like there's, you know, little Japanese um, scrolls on the door. Um, but it's also the sort of some of the philosophies from Japanese um, homes of not only bringing the outdoors in, but also like a shared view. Like you'll see again that you know I share a yard with my neighbor, so it's a nice long, and that's an Asian idea of a shared view. At the time, and even now, more and more people are focused on having big flashy homes with no true design or purpose. Bernudi did the exact opposite of that. He sought to bring concise, meaningful work into architecture. Design, as you can see, is more important than just having big windows and an open floor plan, um, is to have more thought. And you can see, like in this home, it's like the idea is to bring the outdoors in, where you have a brick patio that goes into like a brick tile in the living room. So it's sort of this seamless idea um, of joining um, the outdoors and the indoors.